All right. So today we're going to be talking about Moyos. Um, and let's just start with the 19Q to 17Q. There's four star Hello, points. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. <clears throat> All right, so this is Moyo successful invasion, cool to Suji. Um, invasion tactics. Oh, white connected my stones inside of Black's territory using my stones. That was supposed to be that. All right. Um, this is one of the games I'm most proud of, though at my current level, if I was black in this game, I probably could have stopped white, probably. Okay, so we're just going to start um, with a 19Q game and then work our way up um, and see how it goes. Uh, so this one is Moyo. So let's just identify where the Moyo is and the invasion, and we're going to talk about how to deal with the Moyo. Oh, this Moyo sort of really fast. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, we're not really going to focus on how to build the Mayo. All right, so it looks like here's where we start dealing with some of the Mayo. This attachment here. Um, and I think Black's plan was to build while reducing. And White also had the same plan. Okay. So here, build. Boom, boom, boom. And here. Okay. Okay, um, so at this point, do we have any weak groups? No, it's uh, arguable that there's um, a move right here, but there is connection. So technically, we should have no weak groups. Wide approach. Um, and now black has the option of dealing with the Mayos. So right now it's Mayo versus Mayo. Okay, so black has here... White has probably here. Um, I want to say this one, but this black still like in its face. So probably that line right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a um, black line right here. Let's make a white line right there. Okay, so now we have options. We are black. Uh, so it's Moyo versus Moyo. So the most common tactic for Moyo versus Moyo and how to deal with it um, is to reduce while building. Uh, that is the normal best tactic. In this case, White's is looking a little big because look how close White is to the Tengen versus Black. So it might be in our best interest to deal with White's. But for our for the sake of our topic, uh, we're just going to talk about what are our options. We're not going to talk about maybe what the best option is just yet. We're going to talk about what are our options. So first things first, build while reducing. What are the options to do that? Does anyone know? Um, what would you say? You're really quiet. Say that again. Uh, you're really quiet. I didn't hear you. Oh, E15? E15. 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 Uh, where? Which which letter? P? Like in Peter? Uh, if you're speaking, I can't hear you. E6, maybe? Yeah, P P15. P15. Okay, so we have a move right here. Uh, and was it D6, you said? E, the elephant. Ah, right here. This is a nice move, not an elephant. Okay, and then, the, of course, the move that was actually played in the game right here. Um, Any others? Tengen. Tengen? Okay. Any others? Maybe I want to say N13. N13. All right. So now we're just kind of getting on that line. Um, What about here? Is this yeah. a move? Uh, that was oh, what that I was going to suggest next. <laughs> I would be expanding 
and also it might be even okay it, there might be a line between those two stones though, yeah it's right? hard to say it's hard for white it's hard to it's hard to identify exactly where the line is um but i i i like uh, p12 as well i like p12 and all right so these p12. are kind of our main options yeah. uh i'm just going to go ahead and take this one off because this one like th any of these moves are pretty much the same idea as that one so we're just going to say any of these are playing directly on the line somewhere right let's talk about what do we want our original plan was uh build while reducing okay so if our line is right here to build we usually want to play on the edge somewhere like either here or over here so for those purposes I would say this cap move or these two would be building because this one technically is a building because it's very invadable right here. Um, it's very easy for white to invade. Uh, so technically it's not building because normally you build a bowl by building up the edges and and you do that so you can hold water. So you build like, like that and then like that you can see a... Uh, yeah. You can see there's a bowl, and you want to build it up, and we can hold the water. I want to build a bowl. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind that. Now, this one's interesting, because if you do that one with a follow-up here, that's looking pretty good, right? But what if your opponent starts a fight? Right. So this so you wouldn't play. You wouldn't play to uh, 15, though. Well... You have to consider, like, I don't know if I would or not, right? You have to consider, can I counterattack? Or okay. if you're black, you have to consider, will white counterattack or will white respond? You have to have a, you have to have an idea of what are you going to do for both responses. Um, now, this is more of attack and defense strategy. Um, so for argument's sake, I'm going to say this is not simple enough, especially at 20Q. This is not simple enough. Um, this is too complex. Uh, so I'm just going to rule this one out as... Not a bad move, but maybe too complex for this situation. Okay. Um, okay. Can I quick like say something about it though? Uh, um, is it relevant to what we're talking about? Oh, yeah. It, it just this kind of a move also automatic. You know, it it doesn't not require a follow up immediately. So it's also it it allows for going at a secondary se section. Mm. I know what you're trying to say. It's kind of like the probe idea. But okay. even if it doesn't require a follow-up, you still got a response. You still got an exchange. So if you're asking if this exchange rate helps your original goal of reduce while building, it does not. So okay. e even, even right. if you just play and then go back to doing something else, even if you do what you just said, which, yes, technically is possible, um, it doesn't necessarily make it a good move. So for, the per for our argument's sake of we're trying to build while reducing okay this does not I, this exchange hurts that idea i like that p13 though or p12 yeah move. um so to reiterate don't know if this is good or bad we're just trying to say what's our idea does it do the idea and i think okay. this one this one's too too much to think about for the idea um this one i like because um it does have the follow-up of, of the peep because white can't just try to cut you now. And if white does, you get all these forcing moves. Um, so you do have the follow-up of the peep, and it's building this very well. Uh, but the, the the cost of it is you technically didn't defend d4. Like, you can be attacked. And perhaps this move is sente. Let's say I build while reducing you. That could be sente. And then you kind of, like, uh, harms one a little bit. Because what if I just do something like that? Who's getting the money? What is? Um, so it, it becomes a little bit confusing. So probably the urgency of defense here um, is probably going to make us choose one of these two. Um, so Tengen is, <laughs> is a move that a lot of people like to play, but technically it's usually wrong. Like the Tengen's wrong most of the time. Uh, it's very easy to invade. Fun. It's fun. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's but... <laughs> psychologically very scary and can make your opponent do some very funny stuff. Uh, but technically, it's very invadable here and here. And also, 
same principles, doesn't defend the stone, and it's still invadable, and like here and here. Um, so technically, <laughs> Tengen will support an invasion. It's not like it does nothing, but is it really the best move? Hard to say. Um, e six looks best then, right? Um, I would say one of these two is what I would choose. Um, simply because I, I think defense first, especially at 20Q. Uh, defense first. And then apply our, uh, our Moyo versus Moyo, which is reduce while building. And Black actually played this attachment, which I really like. Um, this one's also fine. It's just easier follow-ups. And if White defends, you can see this cap right here. That's looking pretty nice. Right? It's looking pretty nice. Um, now the problem becomes... Uh, when white did this, black blocked the corner instead of being consistent. Consistent. There's a cutting point, though. Uh-oh. Cutting point. Okay. What about playing here? That way you can double Hane. And this is not 20Q, of course, but... Um, but block click here, because you want to block your base. So the problem with the attachment is... The technical follow-up is here. Something like that, right? Just something along those lines. Because you want to build while reducing. So technically, the follow-up is here. So this is why I say attachment. Attachments are usually single-digit Q, because the follow-ups are a little bit difficult to read. So I would say for 20 Q purposes, this, this is probably the move. It's the simplest. It's the simplest follow-ups. There's a cutting point, but that's a lot easier to handle than the attachments because you have a lot more liberties to work with. Um, and if your opponent plays here, you just play another cap. You don't play an attachment, you play another cap. Um, and caps are shapes that we learn at double digit Qs, and we just learn the follow-up. So I would say for the simplest purposes, this is what I would I would think is a good idea. Um, I'll kind of ask a question. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's say you follow up like you just were saying that that's the simplest idea mm -hmm. and white's moves should be something similar so they're they're going uh they don't may not necessarily respond there but they're going to try to do the same thing on their side right right okay so just like i was defending the square though they kind of need to defend this stone right here because it doesn't have a base so if you just try to like build while reducing you might get attacked or split somehow. So technically, if you're playing defense first, it would be here. And if you tried to play an attachment, um, this can get pretty complicated very quickly. That looks favorable for black. Yeah, so it can, like this is the simplest answer for 20Q. Like, 20Q is defense. You wouldn't want to play that because third line, fourth line. Um, so this is the simplest answer you would expect. And then they go here. And anything else that they do, technically, they we might not know the exact punishment, but we know that this area without a white stone to defend it, without that stone right there, is going to be harder for white to play in the black. So even if white goes and plays another move, it's fine. We just we readjust, right? Now, what's our thing? We might defend our Moyo. We might say his is too big, so let's get reduced. We might continue building. We might punish by attacking immediately. We, we come up with a new we come up with our follow-up plan right but technically it doesn't make our move wrong it just means white is sat giving aji in exchange for a big move it doesn't necessarily make our move wrong um uh does that kind of make sense yep okay um so i would say this is the simplest now let's take it a step further uh we saw that um this attachment had some interesting follow-ups so i think this one is pro if we're single digit q this one's probably very interesting so single digit q you add on attachments uh but you can also add on attachment like right here right for the reduction and stuff can get some very interesting ideas um and then you also have to think if is white's bigger than mine so let's assume that we both build because in the game technically Black accomplished the original plan, which was build while reducing. Building while reducing. But you see that white is getting more. To the point that black's like, okay, I can't just keep playing because white's getting way more than I am. So black had to say, okay, I'm going to go in. Okay. 
Um, so sometimes reducing while building isn't good enough. And this leads us to our next thing. What if your opponent has a Moyo and you don't? Or what if your opponent's too, Moyo is too big that you can't just build while reducing? Okay. So now let's change the situation from build while reducing to let's just handle White's Moyo. Now what are our options? So now if we're just focusing on White's Moyo, let's say it's one of those lines, like somewhere, somewhere around there. Uh, now we're just handling White's Moyo. So first off, we have reduction strategies. Uh, so we have caps, shoulder hits. Um, we at least have these. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> it's just bothering me. Uh, but technically, technically, this is fine. Like these moves are fine too. Um, but let's just focus on White's Moyo. The basic shapes are shoulder hits, caps, um, and for single digit cues, touching. But let's let's look at the double digit cues first. Um, shoulder hits, caps, and we also have invasion ideas. Okay, double digit cue. We have reductions and invasions. And if we're just focusing on White, where's the invasion points? Do you guys know my double digit Q invasion points? 15. Okay, 16. 3 threes. 3 3 is one of our double digit Q moves, yes. What is the other double digit Q invasion moves for the classy approach? We'll say the approaches on the third line to the D16. F17 and C14. Okay. So yeah, the knight's moves. Approach a fourth line stone. Okay. With the double wing, that's not... Wow, oh, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, so these are these are our double digit Q ideas. These are the very simple moves that should live. And if we want to just destroy the points, we can do it. Okay? Does everyone agree that these are all possible options? Yes. Oh, yes. that was a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, so these are all possible options for our double digit Q. Now, for single digit Q, we can add on some more options, which most commonly we add on attachments and forcing moves. We can even add on attachments right here. And heck, we can even add on an attachment right here. Single digit Q, we start getting a lot more options and gets a lot more complex. Now, all of a sudden, we have a lot to read. <laughs> so at single digit Q, if we're just dealing with the Moyo, um, you usually have to play it depending on the board position. So in this case, oh. yep. Doesn't K15 uh, do even a little more? Um, K15 is using uh, a cap behind enemy lines. So it's a little bit more dangerous. So it's so it's not one of my classy approach moves for uh, single digit Q. Um, a possible move, but it's not very simple. Um, and I say simple relatively. Uh, so usually when you use capping moves, um, you're using it for around this line because caps can very quickly jump out. But if you're past that line and they reverse cap you um, like that, the follow-ups become much more difficult for making life because if you're trying to live it can get very complex very quickly uh so you can try to go for attachments down here but at that point how does one help you and that's a lot to read right it would just be easier if you were just doing this idea or maybe this idea i think these learn these variations are simpler it's not not simple but simpler than just trying to live somewhere in here. And yes, the cap might be something to consider, but I think uh, there's easier moves to consider first. So I think these would be the these these are the classy approach moves to consider first. Is third line attachments, um, third line attachments, uh, some fourth line attachments, and caps, shoulder hits for reductions, and any sort of forcing moves. Oh, I forgot this forcing move right here. Any sort of forcing moves. uh this one actually might be interesting because you start a fight it's taking the base so it's attacking um but not, maybe not so simple <laughs> okay so there's actually a lot of moves here um 
so once we once we know that and once we know okay these are the these are the options caps shoulder hits three threes approach fourth line and then attachments lots of attachments right and forcing moves that gives us a lot of options to work with so we don't really have time to read all of these so we have to narrow this down so usually we use positional analysis to narrow it down okay so let's first narrow it down to invasion or reduction on this board black has a lot of influence so probably some sort of reduction would be better than an invasion right now does everyone agree with that yes yeah. okay yeah so already can you, we can can you explain why for that okay so it's just a matter of do we want to prioritize white's influence um and on this board we have some influence so it might be easier to reduce and work with our own influence to destroy theirs instead of just going and destroy theirs now okay. let's say the center was more settled and less interesting for black then maybe you would choose um an evasion now this is very making this distinction is very uh situational like do i want to choose invasion or reduction it's very situational it's very it depends very much on the the board position um if you can just narrow if you just play any of these options you're already going to have a decent move but for reading purposes we don't have time to read all of these so we kind of need to take a shortcut to narrow it down the options so we need to pick a theory and in this case we go back to reduce while invading basically or just use our influence to reduce um, and focus on the reduction we just pick some sort of idea and we use our ju best judgment to figure out which theory will work best on this board um and to improve that it comes with game reviews and uh stuff like that but on this board i think influence versus influence you either want to build while reducing or reduce more using the influence to support um, I think both of those two are, uh, will work well on this board. But if you chose an invasion, it doesn't necessarily make it bad. Um, I think you just are not going to make use of these stones as, as well as you could have with a reduction. Um, so it's not like the 3-3 the three, three points batted by any means. It's just... Um, in the situation, it's not what you want. Uh, it's not even that rather, it's not it's, what it's, you it's, want. It's just In the maybe... situation, it's not what you want to demonstrate to us. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah it's, it's more about it doesn't feel like a good combination. The feeling just doesn't feel like a good combination. Like these stones don't work with these stones very well. And it's not like you were playing a territory game and then you're going for territory. Um, you're playing an influence game and then you're going an invasion and they're going to destroy your influence. And it's going to be a big fight. And this is more fighty. So maybe if you're interested in fights and trying to outreach your opponent, like maybe in handicap go, maybe you might try something like this or something. I don't know. Right, it's, it's the type of game that's going to follow this is a lot more complex than if you have your stones work together in this board. So in this this particular position with all this fourth line, it just, in my opinion, the theory makes sense to just go for a reduction plan instead of an evasion plan. Um, but technically, the best answer would come from trying each of these moves, reading and comparing, but a lot of games are played on the internet and we don't really have all the time in the world for that so we need to like pick a theory and just go with it and i think my yeah. my instinct is to just support uh, use the fourth line so because we have so much fourth line use that to support a reduction um so in that case i'm going to eliminate uh at least these options um i'll keep the forcing moves in mind um even that one i'm going to keep in mind just because it might work with the center. Anything that works with the center, I'm going to keep in mind. Okay, so let's just get rid of those for now. Um, so now we have a lot of options. So we could start considering these. Probably I'm going to consider this one a specialty, which means I'm going to keep it in mind, but I'm not going to start there. And the reason is this move doesn't work with the center in any way, but it might attack him and unsettle him and whatever, right? So I'll keep it in mind for the follow-ups. And I'll keep the Aji in mind, but probably I'm not going to start there. Um, this looks very interesting in the sense that if I start some sort of fight, perhaps my influence will cancel out any influence he gets, and I might actually attack him here. Um, this one can look interesting because it's it's poking these weaknesses while also poking the influence while also poking the corner um yeah, on, on your um uh, triangles are those the only options you want to consider 
uh, are the options you want to go toward? They're options that I want to consider as my starting points. The reason for that is we don't have enough time and go to consider every single option. I mean, if we have eight hours on the clock like they do in like title matches or whatever, then yeah, you need you need a lot more options than this to consider. If you have all the time in the world, you would consider a lot more than this. But this is uh this is more about how do we narrow down the options to something we can think about in like less than two minutes um using theories how do we use theories to narrow down all of these options in the center like there's so many moves that we can consider let's use some theories to narrow those down and then apply reading after that and that's kind of what the triangles are the triangles are uh, my step two and how to make a good move the what that just happened um step one is goal of the turn uh step two is instinct and that's what these options are that i just lost Step two is instinct, and step three is reading, and step four is judgment. Using the instinct and reading, you get some possible results and use your judgment to figure out which of those results are going to accomplish your goal the best. Okay, um, so we use classy approach and theories. Um, let's uh, and then here we use classy approach. And Sorry? E18. Oh, yeah. We use classy approach and theories to narrow down our options to give us something to look at. Uh, and then we read, we apply reading to pretty much go from there to figure out which one do I think is going to work best on this board. And then from there, we use our judgment. And judgment's the hardest thing to improve. Judgment takes tens of thousands of games of experience, tens of thousands, like 10,000 hours of experience to, like, game reviews pro reviews commentary books practice 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 like it's so much judgment is the hardest thing you can go to improve but if we back it up with strong theories um and this is kind of what the classy approach does it gives you some points to start looking at um and it should you should arrive at a decent answer even if it's not the best answer you should arrive at a decent answer and i think um just applying any of these should give you an interesting board to work with um so just to just to clarify the the point the point of all of this is to understand what to think about when i find myself up against a moyo what are what are some things to consider what are how do i arrive at some options that will work for me now, is this all the options? No. Is it the best options? Probably not. We're not AI, right? But how do you give yourself some options to start with? And then pretty much just try to decide through those options by using combination and game reviews and yada yada. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is clarify how I am arriving at these points. How am I narrowing it down to a few moves out of the hundreds that are possible? What theories am I using? What steps am I taking? What shapes am I using? How do I narrow it down? Once I narrow it down, it becomes a lot easier to read. Does everyone kind of follow that logic? Yeah. I, I, was, I had a question in regards to the numbers of the stones uh, and wh where the logic of that applies. The, uh, so you have that, that huge wall on the right, or white. Uh, and so for, I was wondering. White's it, weakness right here? Yeah. And so I was wondering, is that the direction you should for a play or should you be on the other side that so are you tending toward that side where all his stones are where you'll be you might be pretty outnumbered if you don't have a way to escape that's what i'm thinking about so to, to clarify you're thinking about should i choose one of these points or should i choose one of these points right all right that's a that's actually a good point um so we've narrowed it down so, so far now we're like okay but i see I see some problems of white shape over here, and I see some problems of white shape over here. Now it's a question of which one do I think has an, a better future for me, an easy future for me. Now, if we're just looking at white's problems, the thickness right here actually looks like a bigger problem for white than the three stones over here. Um, because this one's already on the third line, and these have no eye space, and these have the potential to make eye space quickly. So imagine let's... Just look at that. That's looking like 
pretty sketch. That's that's looking a little bit dangerous. And that should be very... If we can get that off, it should be very easy to deal with the center. So, the question is, should we focus on bullying A to deal with the Moyo? Or should we focus on dealing, bullying B? And here's the, here's the problem. We also have a weakness at C because we haven't defended it yet. So that, that's a bit of a problem as well. So the question is, what is our highest priority? And technically, the Colossi approach says defense. Now, after a certain point, um, offense can become bigger than defense. But let's just say for the sake of argument um, that we're going to prioritize defense until at least 5Q. Uh, at, at least 5Q. Um, if not one done. So let's just let's just say I have weakness. So I want to deal with this in a way that helps my weakness and maybe bullies B um, while dealing with this bio. So uh, with that in mind, probably I'll select one of these and probably even narrow it down further to these two. Okay, and I think that's, that's what Black uh, did as well right here. However, again, double digit, I would choose a cap. Single digit is touching moves. Um... Oh, I forgot a cap right here. That's a move. Um, so I would say that's probably what I would, I would take as much information into account as I can. So as many theories that I can apply as I can to narrow it down to something simple. And then from there, it's just reading. So we have boom, boom, boom. Okay. And if our opponent does this, uh, we're fine with that. Like from there, it's that, just reading. That puts, that puts black with a more dangerous Moyo now than white. Exactly. Had. So I would say coming up with either this sequence or this sequence right here, I think is good enough. Now, in three moves, the situation's already changed. Three moves. Now, white has no weakness. We don't have any weakness. We have invasion points, but not weakness. Um, and now white has weakness in the top. So maybe White's like, I'm going to defend. Or maybe White says, I'm going to invade and ignore this completely. Well, then let's take Sente and go poke it. Because we aren't ignoring weakness and White is. And if White says, I'm going to defend, well, now we can just go back to another Moyo situation. Okay, so now we're back to... Another situation. So four moves, and already we have to like revisit all the questions again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so question one: Who has the bigger moyo? About equal. It's slightly black. I say black too. You guys are saying black. All right. Um, I said. I, you didn't hear me, I guess. Yeah, no, you said it was even. We have one for even and two for black. Okay. I will say white, actually. White? You're white. All right. All right, all right, all right. Um, this is interesting. So first, let's figure out where the borders are. So this one goes to right here. Let's just use the Tengen as a relative point. Uh, and this one goes to right here. Okay. This one goes to right here. This one only goes to right here. So this one is looking uh, better right here for white, but this one's looking better for black. Um, I would actually say it's pretty decently close. This one, it, black does not have this area, but white doesn't have this area. Um, so let's clean up our marks a bit. So let's say black looks like this with this. White looks like this this let's cancel out these two and what well, looks like this so the question is a or b which one is bigger <laughs> uh maybe we could just do some quick math um so two four six eight uh i just lost count two four six eight ten twelve fourteen no, uh, I'm doing that wrong. I'm just going to count one once because I'm confusing myself. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's say 15 by seven, okay? 15 by seven. All right, uh, 105. All right, so this is going to be 1, 2, uh, this is just 16, 15, 14. 14 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 14 by 7 plus like 4. Um, so that should be less. 1 or 2. So actually, it's actually really close. <laughs> so I think it's actually pretty pretty close, pretty equal. Um, both players have an evasion point at the 3-3. Three, three. Uh, so yeah, I would say it's actually really close. All right, so when it's close, I usually say if it's close, build yours. Just easier, more fun. Um, so I would say if build it's yours. close, what? What was the word? If it's close, just build yours. Oh, build. Okay. Yeah, I think it's easier. I think it's more fun to have the bigger moyo than to destroy your opponents. Um, so if it's close, just focus on yours. Okay, again. Uh, if it's Moyo versus Moyo, you want to build while reducing. Um, so in this case, what are my options? O O10. All right, so we have O10. F10. We have F10. Mm Are you not including attachments? Not yet. That's the next step. Okay. So then you have um, H8. H here? Yeah. Uh, this doesn't bring the line upwards. It brings the line. It's trying to enclose the Moyo, and we don't usually enclose Moyos until like, we run into something. Yeah. So this one's. So then a maybe H, H10 then. H10. Also, uh, two space jump to F11 instead of one space. F11. And I'm assuming that means we have to do a two space over here as well. What about shoulder hits and caps? Okay. Um, I'm not really a fan of this one because there's an elephant's eye. So this doesn't look like we're building as much as we're giving an opening for invading. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rule out this one. Uh, the two space jumps are technically not basic for double digit Q. That's more single digit Q technically. So I'm going to rule out the two space jumps. Uh, so for double digit Q, I would say the one point jumps, shoulder hits, and caps. Those are your shapes for building. So I would say these four for um, for double digit Q, I would just say these four. And then you say, which one do I like? So if I jump here, my opponent reduces. If I jump here, my opponent reduces. Okay. So we have here, here. So let's call this one, let's call this one A, and this one B. Which one do you like? Which one do you like? E. Or for white or for black? Uh, for black, it's black's choice. Okay. Um, I like B. Yeah, I, I like A, actually. I yeah. also like A because it's a cuttable shape, and you can try that. Oh, you're saying that because White's in a nice move, you can try to fight? Yeah. Interesting. I like B because um, White Stone looks like it's pretty cut off from things so you can make a lot of trouble mm -hmm. like a lot of unsettling i'd say everybody. black black also can make a lot of trouble up and oh. because he's pr pr jumping into white's territory pretty easy mm. so, i would say uh i would say either one of these are fine for a double dq i'd say everyone's correct because technically yeah you have a lot of you have a lot of stuff over here you can break in and they're floating they destroy yours you destroy theirs it's pretty interesting um also you have some follow interesting follow-ups here <laughs> it's a very interesting follow-ups there um and then for this one uh yeah i like the 
like so trying to cut the knight directly a uh, little bit dangerous probably um and this one is a ladder but technically you could even close um you also have peep Aji, like this uh is that say, okay for double digit or peeping the, digit? peeping the knight's move is single digit uh it's not this isn't quite double digit um because we don't really peep cuts to take advantage that's more single digit queue we usually look at the cuts directly but i do like that someone acknowledged that the cut that the knight's move has aji um and i'm just showing you some interesting aji uh you could cap right here as well which also could potentially activate a cutting point while trying to block stuff um so i think both have a lot of merit uh, i think both are very interesting so i'd say both are fine um technically this one is probably better than this one just because it's one line further and like you're not scared of the cutting point in any way so this one is pro i would probably choose this one over a one point jump simply because it's one line further and just one one line is just a little bit better uh this one uh i might choose this one instead because this one looks like you want to pressure uh on the left here a little bit even though it's a capping move we have a knight's move and for the same logic of the peep, you see, I think it doesn't do his job nearly as well. And there's also not a lot of follow-ups to this. So I'd say over here, I would choose this one. Now, that's getting into single digit Q territory, though, because I'm looking at follow-ups. Double digit Q, I would say you could blindly pick any of them, and it'll be okay. Single digit Q, we look at follow-ups. So I, with once I apply reading, even using double digit Q starting points, and then following up with single digit Q reading, I can narrow it down to two very good moves. Okay. And that's just our double digit Q moves. Okay. And once we add on single digit Q, um, we have two space jumps. Uh, don't really see attachments. Maybe here's an attachment. Um... And then we could also still like do our invasion stuff, right? <laughs> like we have all the invasion options um, for for both levels of double digit and single digit. Mm -hmm. And that's just if we're doing, um, if we say white, if at any point white's modus becomes too big, we can just say, okay, we're just going to invade. Um, but yeah, you can actually get a lot of interesting stuff here. So White also has R3 too, to always consider. Yeah, but we also have a 3-3, so it's pretty equal. Yeah. Um. I would say if uh, Black plays first, uh, if I just play here, uh, Black's feeling uh, maybe a little bit better. Um, so White's probably going to have to invade soon or at the very least start a fight. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of like have, Black here. Wouldn't you have to push first, though? Hmm? Just, I, mean, I would push first, but maybe that's where I'm how I mess up. Uh, I would... Why do you need to push? Um... So that white can't, so black here. can't go to uh, um, N13 um, directly. Um, that's two cutting points. If I was going to play as black, I'd play right here. That's more solid. Uh, okay. But if you go here, it's not like you can play there anyway. That's That's not a good attack to six. You would play like here or something, or here. Right. If if he if the goes across, that's like the elephant die, uh, type thing. Um, um, yes, but it's also a reduction. <laughs> so, it's saying, "Hey, yours is bigger than mine. I'm going to destroy both." It, it, it's it's the statement of it is saying, "You're destroying mine. I'm destroying yours." The purpose of four is to protect the cutting point, and it doesn't. So, if you don't have a cutting point, then why do you need more defense? Are you, if Because it's not defense if there's no cutting point. So it has to be a block of some sort to block this area. But I'm making the claim with this move that his area, that Black's area is, is bigger than White's. So why do I need to, why do I want to build White's and then big, and build Black's as well and then invade? Um, why would I make that exchange instead of just going in directly if I think theirs is bigger? Okay, can can Black just pull back, pull back if, uh, if N10? If white goes N10. I mean, black can do a lot of things. And yeah, uh, can he the, just go directly and attach at uh, um, O11 or P? Is that P11? P11. 
Um, eleven. Yeah, but P eleven. P oh here? No, that's way too yeah. defensive. That's way, way, way too defensive. You need to attack here. This is your Moyo. You need to attack. Um I th Black can do a lot of things, but the the point of the idea of this move is saying that Black's area is bigger than mine. So I'm just gonna go in. I can also go in here, I can go in here, I can invade here or here. Like it, it doesn't really matter what the move is. It's the statement and then making sure your move does that statement. Um is the point. But mostly I'm talking about uh black right now at the moment though. So when I play here, my personal opinion is I think now black is probably bigger. <clears throat> and I think it's because white had to play a slow move like this to fix because white has cutting points and stuff. So perhaps on white's turn I would start a fight and do something crazy <laughs> because if I read that I just jump and shoulder hit and I say blacks is bigger then I'm not going to play the one that makes blacks bigger I'm going to play the one that maybe gives me more options um but that's that's how to think for white we're just talking about black right now um so yeah uh so the point of today's class was someone said someone wanted to know or I think several people wanted to know, how do I deal with a Moyo? How do I deal with a Moyo? Um, and I think this example was Moyo versus Moyo, so we talked about reductions more than invasions, because I know someone also wanted invasions, but we didn't quite get to that today. Um, well, does everyone understand how I'm seeing the board, how I'm picking out some options and narrowing them down, and then just playing a little bit of reading and making a judgment call? Does anyone have any questions about that process? No. No. Nope. Yep. Okay. So again, um, this one is more of a Moyo versus Moyo situation. Um, so probably I shouldn't have spent so long going over each of the moves. So probably actually should have, it might have been more beneficial to look at different examples. Um, let's see, we have 10 minutes, so let's see if I can find just another one. Uh, Moyo, one-sided attack. This is 4Q to 2Q. So let's see how this one looks. Let's just go to the Moyo. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it looks like this one, there's a Moyo for black at the bottom right. And white decided I'm going to use the fact that this is a baseless stone and I'm going to unsettle it so that way I can run while attacking the stone and destroy this Moyo while running. So that's very interesting. That's that's actually none of what we talked about today. <laughs> it's a whole new tactic. It's um instead of saying that I'm going to reduce like here, play on the line, here, or I'm going to invade by approaching, it's actually invasion by attack. Which is very interesting. It's basically using your opponent's weaknesses, so that way you can deal with this area with the Moyo more easily. Um, so that's actually interesting. But this is also four Q, so you're going to get some more interesting ideas. Um, but this is just a, goes to show you, like even even though we narrowed it down to like two options, there's even or two tactics. There's even more tactics and more ways to accomplish those tactics. This one's an invasion, technically. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's a good move. Uh, this one's an invasion, technically. And we're saying that if black defends, I'm going to make a two space. And you can see... L3 I, seems good, though. Do what? L3 seems good for black, though. Mm, yeah, perhaps. Um, so the idea of the white move is saying, I'm going to deal with this Moyo by using my opponent's weakness, and I'm going to make it difficult for black to play because they have a weaker. Now, on the flip side... There's also this idea of I'm going to sacrifice one stone, which I think we talked about in the earlier today, how I said, don't do it. It's too complicated. Um, but we're also at 4Q. So now we can apply maybe uh, 15 points for a large Mayo. Possible. Uh, maybe we say, okay, this stone has to live. So maybe I can just defend it. Or I can play a 3-3 and say, one of these two have to live because technically white has 
a corner here or a position here. They're both about the same size. So if I play right here, I could say, I don't care which one lives. As long as you only get half of it and I got some Moyo. I'm happy with that. It's a strategy. Um, which I think Black was trying to do. I think Black, what Black saw was um, this is too easy for White. And then White can just reduce the Moyo very easily. Black has a weak group. Uh, so probably this one was too close to thickness is the problem. So maybe if you wanted to build this Moyo, it'd be here. And then if White tries to just play simple, you just build the Moyo. And if White tries to attack you now, well, now it's a completely different story. Now I'm actually surrounding you in my Moyo. So, so it's a lot better of a, it's a lot better of a battle. And even then, if you think, oh, that's too much, then just go here. It's the same principle. And now it's much, much, much easier. Like, even easier, right? Um, so I think Black building the Moyo, expanding the Moyo was actually, the way he did it, uh, probably gave White a good option. And White caught that option very quickly, which is, I think, nice. Um, so here, here, I think. And then Black builds the Moyo. Uh, so you can actually see there's there's many cool tactics you can do. Uh, so, but starting out for the classy approach, how to deal with the Mayo. Narrow it down to the simple stuff first. The simple stuff is reduction or invasion. Okay, play the board. In this case, white doesn't have a Mayo, so reduction or invasion is probably acceptable here uh, for double digit Q. For single digit Q. I would try to find weaknesses, like this stone is near white stone. This stone is kind of far away, but also near white stones. So just like white did, try to find weaknesses to start a fight in that area where your opponent can't attack you very well um, or has trouble attacking you, and then you can destroy those points with an invasion. I think that that tactic uh, or idea is very interesting here. Um, so for single digit cues, maybe an attachment right here is interesting. Because we use Aji to, we use the Aji of this stone to try to survive more quickly. Um, three three is also still possible, but this one's probably small. Can I do this? Yeah, I can. Can I do that? No, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. I'm, <laughs> that's that life and death shape. I was thinking this was Sentai, but it's not. Okay, so I believe it's that variation. Um, but you can see black can also gets sente, so black gets to make it bigger or whatever. So you can, probably that one's not good enough. But you can see there's actually many ways to th there's many options, and then it's just, it you have to gain experience by trying options to figure out which one do you like, which one do you not like. Um. But hopefully this uh, gives you guys more confidence in. I, I have a sort of a possible su suggestion. What? Um, give us a homework thing. So saying maybe not this time, but another time you can just mm -hmm. say, okay, we're going to go over this kind of a position or, and give us a board, an SGF and to look at it, see what, uh, you know, a direction. Just an um, idea. I think that would be possible if we were talking about how to use a Moyo. Uh, but the problem is we're talking about how to deal with it, how to play against it. Right. So we can't really force our opponent to do stuff. So it's it's, it's hard to have a homework assignment where your opponent right. does something. Um, if it was how to use a Moyo, then that would be different. Then I could just say, play Niren, say, and go wild. Uh, I, I just meant <laughs> as a general concept. Yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting idea. I'm uh, not sure that it will apply to this specific topic, but maybe maybe in the future we can do something like that. Uh, but for this specific topic, um, it's more of if you encounter a Moyo, you encounter a Moyo, and then you can remember the class. Uh, so yeah, what I, what I really what I really want you guys to get from this is if you see a Moyo, don't be confused and don't be scared of it. Just use your theories and basics to give yourself options and use the classy approach to figure out, okay, these are some options I have to, excuse me, to start with. And then from there you can build on it. Um, so you, you can see that, um, so this is Borky again, this is higher, higher level than well, what we've been talking about today, but 
you can see we didn't just apply um, invasion. We we applied large mayo, okay. Then we applied evasions, and then we also applied uh, our opponent's weaknesses in Aji, and we came up with this move, which is very nice. I think it's it also gave White uh, a slight lead here. Um, well, I guess White already had a slight lead. Uh, but you can see this is actually has some very interesting responses, and Black was forced to do something strange uh, because he didn't like the results. Okay, um, so you can see actually uh, just adding layers to each of these ideas. So just start with the bare bones basics: reduction or invasion, shoulder hits, caps, three three approach fourth line, double digit Q basics. Then add on a layer attachments. Then add on a layer Aji. Add on a layer attack something. Add on a layer, make an exchange that opens up options. And then you combine all those layers, and all of a sudden, you have lots and lots of options to deal with Mayos. But at the very least, what I want you guys to take from this um, isn't isn't this tactic. This is really advanced tactic. is isn't really this tactic. It's more of, if your opponent has a Moyo, instead of saying, I don't know where to play, I want you to at least have a couple options to choose from. That's kind of what I wanted for this lesson is just make sure that or make uh, this class uh, I make sure that you guys at least have some options. Even if you don't like know all the best options, even if you um can't think of the single digit Q options, at the very least I want you to think of the double digit Q options. At the very least I want you to see here, here, maybe here, here and here, uh here and here. Now these two are not on the line, so you probably eliminate those. So at the very least you would have five options here. At the at minimum, I want you guys to at least have five options. Okay, uh, and for this position, I want you guys to be able to just say, "Hey, I I I I know what I can I can choose stuff." And then when you want to improve, you just give yourself more options. And that's how the classy approach works. It says, "Hey, start with this. As soon as you master this, add on something else. Add on a layer." So for invasions, it's like start with these. And as soon as you understand these, add on attachments. As soon as you understand that, add on weaknesses in Aji. And a lot more reading. <laughs> uh, and as soon as you understand that, start combining it at a higher level and getting even more and more layers to it. But the bare bones basics, how to deal with the Moyo, just start with the double the Q options and then add on layers as you get stronger. So shoulder hits, caps, 3-3, three, three, approach fourth line stone. Just reductions or invasions. Just pick one. And just go from there. Any questions? No, nope. it's good. No questions. Thanks for doing it. Awesome. So yeah. yeah. Hopefully, uh, I I don't know if any if it was any of you. Well, I, actually, it might have been gone that asked for the moyo. Um. Yeah, I did. Gotcha. Uh, so does this help you have more confidence in how to deal with moyo? Yeah, it gives me a lot of ideas and. Like you say, I'm thinking it adds me some layers. Okay, cool. Uh, Gone. Did you also ask for it? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, okay. Um, cool. Well, hopefully, hopefully this gives you guys at least, you know, some more information. You know, that's what kind of what we want from every class. Just more, more knowledge every week. It's kind, it's kind of what it is. More knowledge. Um, if you guys, uh, do you guys know about the database here? Uh, uh, yes, I have not contributed to it yet. <laughs> uh, does Does everyone else know about the database? No. I didn't. Know I didn't about it. Yeah, I've never seen that. Okay, so in the announcements in the Discord, um, in the announcements, if you scroll up past my uh, <laughs> donation thing, um, there is a document. Uh, it says I I am creating a database for game examples to be used for lessons and lectures. Uh, so anyone who wants to add to those just fills out the form, and this is uh, this is the form. Um, and then you fill it out for your games, and you pretty much just add to a database uh, that teachers can use. And this is the and the data the spreadsheets right below it. It's a, it's the responses, which is the spreadsheet, um, is right below it. And the idea is that any teacher can use these and find examples. Oh, I, I remember hearing something about it. Yeah, so it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six people 
contributed some games. Uh, so the more people that contribute games to this, um, the better. Uh, again, it's in the announcements section in the Discord. Uh, and then yeah. once you mark this uh, going forward uh, in the future for classes and stuff, we can actually... Uh, when I talked about how I need examples for certain things. Well, if you can identify like several games that have, you know, like certain examples, you can say, hey, uh, in the database we had this. Can we talk about this in the class um, and maybe go over it or something? Um, so, yeah, this the idea was to not just for me, but to help teachers who need like who want to talk about a certain concept, but don't really have good examples. Well, here's a database of examples. And that's kind of how today was possible uh, because I didn't really have examples for Moyos. And then I looked in, I was like, hey, we have Moyos. We have a lot of Moyo games. Let's go. Uh, let's go uh, look at that. Right. Um, and talk about it. And now we have some good examples for Moyos. Um, and we also have different Moyos at different levels, like 4Q to 2Q. And we had the 20Q. So we actually had Moyos at different levels, which I think was exciting. So that's kind of where the topics or the, the topic came from was because we saw we had a lot of Moyos and we also had, um, access to the database so we had examples uh so for uh, i i guess no one here contributed but for the ones who did contribute like thanks for contributing and it was possible thanks to their co contributions and other lessons and classes might be possible as well and of course if you guys have any ideas about what uh topic you would like for in the future like probably this month we'll focus on moyos um but like next month or something you can say hey uh, i want to focus on this well we can track and see if there's examples in here or you can bring your own examples, of course. Um, and adding to the database kind of let, lets that be possible. Does anyone have any questions about the database or anything? Not really. Okay. Um, and yeah, this database is open to everyone. So um, it should be, if you guys want to use it for your own classes or teaching or students or whatever, like this should be available for everyone. Uh, so do keep that in mind if you share your games. Um, you're letting anyone talk about it is kind of the uh the the idea so but yeah uh that's where it is it's in the announcement sections if you guys want to add to it but yeah hopefully you guys found today helpful and thanks for everyone for showing up i was really worried that we we're gonna have to cancel if no one showed up um so thanks for showing up and hopefully thanks much you guys enjoyed the class and i will see you next week bye thank, thank you very much. much thank you bye, -bye.